In this Lightroom color grading tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you how you can create this cool winter style color grading effect to really emphasize those warm highlights and cool shadows. And I'm gonna start right now. Right guys, so the first thing you want to do is go ahead and choose a photo. And I recommend choosing a photo that's either shot at winter or a, basically a photo that has snow in it, something that's got white basically. Now this photo is a great example because we've got the balance between the warm highlights and the cooler shadows. So this was shot in Helge in Norway on my DJI Mavic 3 Cine. I've uh, recently taken this photo, very cold and obviously shot at winter. But the reason I really like this photo is because it's got the really nice cool shadows but if you have a look over here you can see where the sun is just hitting the kind of icy fjord you can see here you can see how it's really warming up that kind of area of the photo and it's the same over here with this mountain range so you really want to balance the the warmer highlights and the cooler shadows and this particular preset does really well with that or this particular color grading effect so what we're going to do go over to the develop panel found on the right hand side and then we're going to do is drop down to the basics panel now i shot at manual white balance with this and what's what's nice is you can do with the drone so i shot it at 5600 kelvin but if you are trying to get better white balance or you shot it on auto white balance what i recommend doing is using this white balance selector tool and just hover over the photo where basically you want to select something that's grey or something that's got a neutral tone to it to better reflect the white balance. After that, you've got your tone and exposure. Now in this particular example, what I'll do is probably bring up the exposure a little bit by around 0.5 of a stop. But what I'm gonna do is actually leave the contrast slider alone because what I'm gonna do is actually add in natural contrast using the tone curve. Now after that, as you can see, the highlights are a little bit blown out. So what I'll do is go to the highlights here bring that down ever so slightly. I'll probably bring it down by around minus 30. And then with the shadows here, same situation, these shadows are quite dark. So what I would do is bring it up by not a large amount, I'll probably bring it up by around the same amount, plus 30. Now with the whites, I do like the whites, but the problem is they're looking a little bit gray because we brought down the highlights. So I'd bring it up just a small amount by around 5% or so, not much. And then with the blacks here, again, we don't want this washed out look that you can see in the far distance. Basically, that's just the atmosphere getting in the way of the photo. So to combat that, I'd actually like going into my blacks here and lower that down by minus 15, minus 20 in that particular case. Now to fix the other issue, so to fix the texture, because you can see there's a little bit lacking in sharpness, I would say. We could go to the texture here, increase that by around 10. Then with clarity, I like increasing that by around five. And then dehaze, that will really fix that issue. I'm gonna increase that by minus 15. And that will just remove some of that haze that you can see in the background. And already, if I show you the before, and after we're cutting through that haze basically in the far distance. Now what I'm gonna do is leave vibrance and saturation alone. We're actually going to add in some vibrance and some saturation by when we're basically going into the color mixer tool, which we'll do in a bit. Right, so what we're gonna do is turn off basics panel. And the next one we're gonna do is go into tone curve. Now you wanna go to the point curve here. And what you can do if, well, what I'm gonna do in this tutorial is I'm gonna go to the point where you can see it says point curve linear. Click on this and you've got two other options. You've got medium contrast and strong contrast. I'm just gonna add in a medium amount of contrast here and then start playing around with these sliders. It gives you some anchor points that allows you to manipulate or if you're more interested in just adding in a simple S curve, you can do that as well. It really depends on how much contrast you would like in your photo. So what I'm gonna do is bring up the highlights just a little bit more and then I'm gonna do is actually bring down these shadows a little bit more as well, but not by much. A medium amount of contrast works really nicely. And of course, you can actually change the input and output value as well if you like. But basically, that's all we're going to do in the tone curve. You can do a little bit more if you like, but to be honest with you, I don't think adding in too much contrast works in this particular photo. It can make it look a little bit too much too much HDR, which I don't like, especially with the whites, because you can have a tendency of making them look a little bit gray. And that's something you definitely don't wanna do with a winter preset or a winter look, is making the snow look gray. You wanna make sure it's nice and crisp and white. And I think a medium amount of contrast works quite nicely for that. Okay, so let's go ahead and do color mixer. So let's go ahead and change the hue first. So what we'll do is leave the reds alone. We're not gonna do that in this particular case. But with the oranges, I'm gonna lower that by around minus five. 
And then the yellow here, which will predominantly affect all of this warmer tone over here. What we wanna do is make it a little bit more orange, again, warming that area up a little bit more. So we're gonna go for minus 20. And it's the same with the greens. There's some greens found in the warmer tones. It is a technically a warmer color. So what we're gonna do is also decrease that by minus 10, bringing it closer to those oranges and reds, which are more traditionally warmer colors there. Now with the aquas here, we want to kind of do the opposite. So actually we want to increase that by around five. That will actually turn a little bit more of those kind of greens into more blues, which is quite nice, but very subtle change. And then we've got the blues here. What we're actually going to do is increase that by 25. As you can see, it's bringing a little bit more of that purple look. Now you don't have to go so strong, I'm actually gonna go a little bit less in this example. I'm probably gonna go for around, again, plus five. What you don't wanna do is you wanna go add in. You can see it starts making it quite tealy, which I don't like. I like that balance of that kind of purple. So I'm gonna go for an increase of around about five, but five to 10 works quite nice in most examples. Next you've got is your purples. And purples, we wanna again increase. So we go for a plus 10 in that case. And the last thing we've got to do is magentas, which will increase by 25. Now in the saturation, we're not gonna to do too much of a change. We're basically gonna lower some of those more warmer tones and increase some of the bluer tones in the saturation. We're not gonna completely remove the colors, but we are going to slightly manipulate them to bring a little bit more of a cooler tone to the overall photo without removing the warmer tones from the highlights. So with the reds here, what we're gonna do is, uh, well, lower it down by minus 10. Then we're gonna do the same with the oranges. We're gonna drop that by minus 10. And then the yellows, we're gonna make a slightly larger impact. We're gonna lower those by minus 35. And it's the same situation with the green. So we've got to go for minus 35 there. Now, the blues are quite strong, but I'm gonna leave those aquas alone. I'm just gonna affect the blues. We're gonna drop that down by minus 10, just a small amount. Uh, we're not gonna change a massive impact. And then the last thing we'll do is again, go to the purples there, lower that by minus 35 and then the actual magentas there, we're gonna lower that by minus 10. So what we're doing is we're removing some of the warmer tones by leaving most of the blue. So what I can do is just show you the color mixer so far, if we do the before and after, it's a subtle change, but they'll make a bigger change when we go ahead and affect luminance. So with the luminance here, we're gonna go straight to the oranges, we're not gonna affect the reds, we're gonna go for minus 20, and then with the greens here, we're gonna drop those down as well by minus 10. Now you can actually affect the yellows by making them slightly brighter if you like, but again, I would do it on a case by case basis. So basically the oranges are mostly this section of the rock here. And as you can see, if I lower them or brighten them, I like brightening it up a little bit slightly, but what has a tendency, if you brighten it while desaturating it, you completely lose that color. So I'm actually quite happy just with a plus 10 increase there. And the last thing I'm gonna do is go down to the purples here, increase that by 15 and magenta, increase that by 15. Lovely, okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is go to color grading. And this is where I was saying, create that split tone look. So those nice warm highlights and those nice cool shadows. So what we're gonna do is go to the highlight section first in our color wheel. I'm gonna go ahead and select a warmer tone color. So I'm gonna go ahead and select uh, basically 45 degrees. So that's that kind of nice warm orangey yellow. Then I'm gonna go ahead and increase the saturation to that. I'm not gonna increase it much, but around, I don't know, 15, 20% works quite nice. And basically we're gonna do the opposite in the shadows. So we've added warmth to the highlights, we're gonna basically cool down the shadows. So we're gonna to go to the shadows here, we're gonna choose the, basically the opposite color. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose a 225. And then with the saturation, I'm gonna go ahead and just increase that, probably by around about the same amount. So I'm gonna go for about plus 15 there. It doesn't add made a difference, so if I do the before and after, but it does add that warmer look to the right-hand side of the photo and the cooler look to the left-hand side of the photo, which is quite a nice balance, especially when it comes to overall composition. Okay, so we'll turn off color grading. What I'm gonna do is go down to lens correction. You wanna make sure that you've got your remove chromatic aberration and enabled profile corrections turned on. Uh, make sure that's turned on there. And then the next thing we're gonna do is drop down to effects. Now in effects, I'm gonna go to post cropping vignette. I'm gonna go add in a slight amount of vignette to this photo, but a really small amount. Again, this is more optional. So I'm just gonna go for minus 5% there. And the last thing we'll do is gonna go to calibration. Now inside calibration, you've got your red primaries, green primaries, and blue primaries. And we're gonna predominantly affect the greens because that controls the blues in the photo. I know it sounds a bit weird. If you want to know more about what the calibration tool can do, go ahead and watch my masterclass series I've already made. And I'll make, place, basically place the link just below the like button. But what we're gonna do, 
gonna go to the green primaries here and I'll show you. If I increase it, we're basically adding in more teal. Where if I decrease it, it looks like we're adding in more purple. So what you wanna do is find a nice balance. I find increasing it by around about minus 20 works quite nice, especially in the highlight areas. And again, you've got the same with the saturation. I like increasing that probably around plus five we've got there. And the last thing I would do is predominantly just affect the sky. Now what this can do is either brighten or darken the sky. Sometimes a skies can look a little bit overblown especially if you shot it in a fairly white atmosphere like for example snow it can make it can trick the camera into thinking it's too bright and basically create clipping which is where there's no information either in the highlights or shadows and we can combat that by basically just affecting the sky you can see over here it's incredibly white so what we're going to do is go over to our mask panel here with our new ai masks i'm going to go ahead and simply select the sky Basically Lightroom Classic will set the sky for us. And then what I recommend doing is just going to the highlight slider here and just taking that down a little bit more. That will bring a little bit more saturation as well as a little bit more clarity to the right hand side of the photo. You can also go to your temperature here and with the sky selected, you can select how warm or how cool of the sky you want to be. And as you can see, it makes a big impact into the difference. So what I actually like doing is going from minus 10 in temperature and then minus 10 in tint. What that tint will do is add a little bit more green to that blue, making it a little bit more teal. And what I can do now, guys, is show you the before and after. So what I can do is show you the before and show you the after. And what's really nice is we've cut through all of that dehaze and we've added this nice cool look, but it's not overpowering. We've still got those nice warm highlights. If you wanna add more warmth to it, what you can actually do is go into that global color grading and add in a little bit more of that saturation to bring the balance back from those highlights and shadows. What you can also do is a last quick trick, go into color grading here and you've got that blending and balance play around with those to better blend the highlights and shadows together to get a better result overall. Brilliant, and there we go guys. I hope that video was helpful and informative. Now if you'd like to learn any more about Photoshop, Lightroom, and anything photography related, make sure to go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. I've been James for Photo Fever, and I'll catch you guys next time.